and then Deputy. The, um, I'm always conscious of the fact that when we discuss this issue of the people present here in the House who have suffered loss in their families and those that are not present, and um, it's, I'm sure, a very difficult time for them when this matter is discussed. I think it's also very appropriate that Deputy Brazel mentioned the outstanding contribution of, of Dan Neville, both as a senator and a TD. And I can remember many years ago listening to that, in many respects, lone voice, um, you know, constantly speaking on that issue and doing an enormous work to, to help people. I think the contribution in recent years of Joan Freeman and Pieta House uh, must also be recognised because we have a huge movement now uh, in darkness into light walks and you know thousands upon thousands of people uh, all over the country you know joining that campaign and also former uh, deputy john maloney who uh, put extraordinary work into that report uh, some years back and was you know I, I watched him again debate and he was so passionate about that and i think it was deputy mary lou initially said you know we have to think of all these people who are not involved in the system who are not being paid for work in the system but are people who just got up and did things because of their concern on the issue. I have no doubt, Minister, yourself, and I want to wish you well, will take on this issue and give it everything. And I want to compliment my colleague here, Deputy Brown. I know since Deputy Martin appointed him, he has really put many, many hours and days of work into you know, bringing this matter forward. I just want to briefly refer to the difficulties in our own constituency of Roscommon Galway. There's an external review now going on over 15 months, and several deadlines have been missed. Uh, in fairness to the HSE, they have made contact with the people who have been carrying out that review. And one of the points they're making back to the HSE is that there's so many people who want to make a contribution to this report that they've been overwhelmed. I don't want to preempt or prejudge that report, but I will guarantee you in this House and throughout the country it will mean a lot of debate and a lot of talk. There are many people who can't get services, there are many people who have been turned away, and I, I, I know that many people in the system are trying so hard to help and assist families, but I know of one case people I would know very, very well, where a family with a parent had driven to five hospitals and was told, this hospital can't deal with your problem. And eventually, at a health centre, it ended in tragedy. And we always use this phrase, closure to these issues, when there's a, a report comes out and there's a closure. There is never closure for families on this issue. Never, ever, ever. You speak to people who have lost somebody 20, 30 years back, there is never closure. I can assure you, as I stand here in this chamber today, so many families will tell you that. It doesn't go away. Because as already been said, the questions are always asked among families and people in their own minds why did he or she do it? Why did it happen? And a few simple things could, could really, I think I'm convinced, could help a lot of people. The art of talking, of conversation, has disappeared. And social media bears a huge responsibility here. And you know, maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes we as adults, maybe we dismiss youngsters and say, ah, don't worry about it. And maybe yet that five minutes of conversation could change the focus of that person's mind. There's a lot more people out there than we imagine feel rejected. And it might be only the art of conversation, as I said, would change everything for them. And that's so vital and it's so important. We have silent conversation now because of social media in many respects. And there can be no such thing as silent conversation because it doesn't work. I'm not going to, to continue any further. I just hope that in relation to our own constituency, 
that we will have reports. I mean, St Bridges and Bannon is slow closed. The services in Galway City are very, very poor for the region. We haven't the adequate service after Scammon Hospital for it. And again, as other people have mentioned, we have that gap between younger people and adults, people falling through the net at that stage as well, which I know you, you well understand. I think we are onto a new plane. Mm. I think everybody in this house, irrespective of what side of the house they're on, want this matter to improve. We're not going to solve every problem, but we must reach out to all of the people out there who are just, I suppose, looking for the proper services, looking for staff to be put in place, and maybe looking at more drop-in centres. And in that regard, I will conclude by saying this. I think people like Faroya, youth groups, Marco Nafarma, whoever they are, they have done enormous work in bringing young people together through the activities they have. And I would like to see government even giving further support to those type of groups. Thank you.